welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at the puzzle on the screen, which is called Hybrid, and it's by Akash Dulani. Um, now, Akash, well, he should be known to many of you. He's one of the, the great sedetas. Great sedetas? What's a sedeta? I don't know. I was going to say, I was thinking I was trying to say the word setter. He is one of the great setters in the world of Sudoku, uh, a master sort of hand of handcrafted content and um, has made loads and loads of Sudoku books, actually. If you go to Amazon and search on Akash's name, you'll find loads of really good books on Sudoku. Um, and Akash is a Facebook friend of mine, and he emailed, well, Facebooked me this one the other day and said that it has a really beautiful solve path. So I think we should be in for a treat, as usual, on the channel. And I'm told as well, Mark's tested this one, that this is quite approachable, re really quite approachable. Um, so it should be a bit easier than some of the puzzles we sometimes we sometimes do battle with on the channel. Um, now, other news. Uh, this morning we released a bonus video um, on the channel of me attempting to solve today's Times crossword. So the Times cryptic crossword on Fridays is normally a bit of a beast and today's was no, well, it was, it was very difficult, but it was also very, very good indeed. It had a lot of very good clues in it. So if you're into your cryptic crosswords at all, I'd certainly recommend that video for, to you. I'll try and remember to put a card on the screen there um, so you can click on that and find it. Right, I need to interrupt myself because I recorded the video and then remembered that I was meant to say happy birthday not to one person today, but actually to two people. So Albano, I hope you have a very happy birthday. Your wife Victoria got in touch with us and said it was your birthday today. And also Harry. Harry, I think you've turned 24 today, if I'm not mistaken, and your girlfriend Lily let us know that. So I hope the pair of you have a splendid day. Loads of cake, of course. And now we can return to, to me, I suppose, doing the rest of the video. <laughs> um, other than that, just, uh, just to remind those of you who are patrons of the channel over on Patreon, you've still got 12 days left to get your solutions in um, to the competition uh, for April and being with a chance of winning the prize. And of course, we have this incredible one hour video over there by Philip Newman, where Philip sort of talks through some of the very complicated classic Sudoku techniques. And, and of course, he explains how to solve his puzzle, Palpatine's design, one of the hardest Sudokus, or well, one of the hardest classic Sudokus in existence. So that's definitely worth checking out. The feedback we've had on that video has been sensational. Um, now that's said and done, let's get on with hybrid. Um, and these are the rules. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in cages must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So those two cells sum up to 10. So do those two. Those two sum to 15. Those sum to 5, etc. Um, clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. Um, digits can, no, di yeah, digits can repeat along such diagonals if allowed by the other rules. So let's look at that diagonal. We're being told that these four cells sum to 20 and we can repeat digits providing we don't break the rules of Sudoku. So we could put two twos there and then we need a seven there. And I think that does add up to 20. And although we've repeated a digit along the diagonal, these twos do not see each other. So that would be legitimate. Uh, so that's how the diagonals work. And then we've got these lines. Now each purple line must contain a set of non-repeating consecutive digits. Um, and these digits can appear in any order. So basically, what should we say there? Let's imagine this cell was a one. Um, then we would immediately know that this purple line has to be filled with consecutive digits. So it must have one, two, three, and four on it. And we'd have to put the two there by Sudoku. And this, this could be a three and a four, and that could be in any order. So that's a legitimate way, at least initially, of filling this purple line. I highly doubt that that will turn out to be the correct way of filling this purple line, but we shall see. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I get two given digits today. Thank you very much, Akash. Um, and what else do we get? We get a load of cages that are all divisible by five. That's what I'm seeing. That's a little bit interesting, isn't it? Because that suggests we can't put a five in any of these cages I'm seeing. Because I can't put a five in a 10 cage because I'll have to put another five in it and that will definitely break the rules. 
Um, so five in row one is locked into one of those, and five in row nine is locked into one of those dominoes. No, okay, I'm not quite understanding that. I don't know, there doesn't seem to be... Uh, no, and then I was looking at column three and column seven and where fives could go there, and it's a bit restricted as well, but I don't think it's restricted enough. Almost got the bones of an X-wing there, but not, not quite. So, okay, so what else are we going to look at? We must be looking at diagonals, I think, to, to start this off, because I don't think we can do anything with a four-cell Renban until we've we've learnt about at least some of the digits on that Renban and what they might be. 14 and... Oh, no. Um, okay, well those two digits have to be a, quite small, I can see that, because a 15 cage is either going to be a 6-9 or a 7-8 pair. So this digit is quite high. So th these two cells have a maximum value of 5. So if this was a 6, that could be a 1, 4 or a 2, 3. But if it was 1, 4, it would still have a 2, 3 on the line because it would have to be consecutive sequence. What about if that was 7? Then it would be 1, 3. Yeah, it would still be 1, 2, 3, 4. What about if it's 8? It would be 1, one 2. So there are low, right, there are very low digits on this Remban. The, the most flexibility we can award this Renban is if we make this a 6. And that that is the only way that this is not a 1, 2, 3, 4 Renban. If this is 6, I think we can put 2 and 3 in those squares and then 4 and 5 in these two squares. But everything else, I think, results in there being a 1, 2, 3, 4 on that Renban. So this Renban definitely has 2, 3 and 4 on it. And it has to be selected from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And that is an absurdly pencil marked 2 by 2. I don't like that. That's horrible. Um, that's the sort of thing Mark would do. And I find offensive. <laughs> it does not appeal to my eye. Um, Well, and actually, we can't, if, if there is a 5 on that Renban, they can't be on the diagonal, because that's going to break the diagonal. So if there is a 5, it's in one of those two cells. Hmm, that's, well, that's interesting, isn't it? But it's not really... It's not really broken the puzzle open. We've almost got something going on with high digits in column 7. I wonder if that's the idea here. Because one thing about a 15 cage is obviously that's 6, 9 or 7, 8 again. So we know that these dominoes contain high digits. We know that foursome contains low digits. We know any 5 cage contains low digits. Ah, no, I see what we do here. Right, OK, we need to look at this domino. Why do I want to look at this domino? Well, let's ask the question, is it possible that this domino contains low digits, i.e. 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s and 5s? And the answer to that is no, because if we do put low digits in both of these cells, then I've got 6 low digits in box 3, and that's a problem, because you will have to repeat one of them. And that means at least one of these orange digits has to be a high digit, has to be a 6, 7, 8 or 9. And you can see that's going to create a virtual quadruple in column 7 on 6, 7, 8, 9, which tells us that the rest of this column, every other digit in the column, must be a low digit. So we're going to learn loads about low digits in column 7. That can't be a 5 because it's in a 5 cage, so that's 1, 4 or 2. This can't be a 5 because it's in a 10 cage, so this has got to be 7, 9, or 6. And that's very annoying, <laughs> because it doesn't seem to do anything. Um, hang on a minute. Let me just work this out. Uh, 
Uh, oh, right, these two... Ah, right, okay, row one might be where we're meant to look because this domino, we, we said, just said it contains a high digit, and it does, but it only contains one high digit because it can't contain two high digits, so we're going to have a surplus of high digits in column seven. So one of these digits is low, where it'll join its friends on the on the Renban line and create a quintuple on one, two, three, four, and five, which means these two digits are high digits, and they're going to join their friends there and make a quadruple on six, seven, eight, and nine. So now everything else in this row is low. Yeah, we should, probably should have done high-low colouring. I think that can't be a five. That can't be a five. That can't be a five. This has to be six, seven, eight, or nine to make the ten, the ten uh, cage add up. And and that right. I know, and I now see how to start the puzzle properly because that that is absolutely beautiful. Look what Akash has done in box one. This this domino here. Look at where the five goes in row one. It must be in this domino, and that is rather beautiful for this Renban, which now because it can't contain a five, it has to contain a consecutive sequence that's either one, two, three, and four, and it can't be that because that will give this cell no value or six, seven, eight, nine, which is what it must be. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. And okay, so now, oh yeah, 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 this, 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 is, this is absolutely lovely. This is absolutely lovely. So let's do Sudoku on this box. These digits have to be low digits because six, seven, eight, nine have gone. And they can't be five because the five is in this domino. So these are ones, twos, threes, and fours. Now, I think there's a few ways you can look at this, but the simplest way to look at it is where does five go in this column now? Because five can't go in a 10 cage. So it's not in any of those cells. So it goes here. Once five is in here, what's this Renban? Well, this Renban has to be extreme digits again, and it can't be six, seven, eight, nine. So that's one, two, three, four which means these squares are six, seven, and eight, which means that square's a nine, this square's a one, aha, and we're off to the races. So that's not one, so that's not four. So this is a, a one, two pair, which means, oh, um, Oh no, I'm just going to go back to fives again. The fives, the fives are the beautiful thing in this puzzle. So where does five go in the bottom row? And the answer is, I don't quite know, but I know enough for it to be lovely because the fives can't go in this domino. So the fives have to go over here. And once the fives are over here, they're not on the Renban, which means the Renban is extreme and it can't be one, two, three, four, because that's going to give these a problem. So that's got to be six, seven, eight, nine. And that means these are not nine, look. And so we can... How do we do this? So these have got to be from three, four, and five. This has got to be from two, three, and four. This has got to be from two, three, and four as well to go with the six, seven, and eight here. So this has got to be from one, two, and three, and it's not two. Okay. These are not two. And Oh, and I've just totally neglected, yeah, I've totally neglected my uh, little killer clues. I've got one on this diagonal, which adds up to 15. So these two cells add up to 14, which means they must be 6, 8, I think. Yeah, that's got to be 6, 8. It's the only way it'll work. So this square is a 6 or an 8. These are not 6, 8 anymore. So that seems to require this to be a 7 and that to be a 9. So that's not a 9 and that's not a 7. And can we keep that going is the question. And do I know? Oh, no, I don't. I know this is one high and one low, don't I, in orange? So I probably don't know the order. Oh, 14. I can do that on this little killer. That must, that must be the minimum value in every single cell along the diagonal. That's got to be a 1. 
So that's got to be a four. And this must be a six, seven pair. So that seems to be helpful. Um, does that seem to resolve itself? No. Ah! Okay, well, let's get rid of ones from all of those cells, fours from these cells, one and four from this cell, which gets rid of six and nine from this cell. Uh, four comes out of that cell, look, so that cell's no longer able to be a six. So six... Six is in one of these three cells. Where it's going to be accompanied with a four, because because whichever ten domino we put it in, it's going to have to have a four with it. Oh, I see. Right, lovely. This four is important, actually, because it's putting the four in box one in this domino. And that means, where do we put the six in column three? And the answer is not here, because if we did put it here, it would need to have a four with it. So that has to be the six. That's beautiful. So that's a four. These are no longer four. Uh, that's no longer a six, look, so that's no longer a nine. Oh, I see, and I don't, I still don't know what this ten domino is, because it's, it's either three, seven, or two, eight. Okay, so <laughs> let's take stock. We've done the 14 diagonal. The 20 diagonal has quite low digits on it. So even if we maximize these, we could double three those digits, look. That would give us 15 on the diagonal. So this square is at least a five, but it can't be six. So it's five, seven, eight, or nine. That's very annoying indeed. If, if I could get rid of the five, I'd have a quadruple in the column. Um, Hmm, okay. What is it then that we're missing here? Can I do more with this diagonal now? Or not? No, I don't think I can. Oh, yeah, I can. No, I'm wrong. There's a, definitely a one on this Renban by Sudoku. So this Renban doesn't have a five on it. So there's definitely a five in the orange cells, therefore. So that's not a five. So we've got a three, four pair. And we can. One of these two squares has to be a two in row nine. I'm seeing lots of things that are completely useless. Oh, I've got a one, three pair here. That's not useless. Where's that come from? I don't know where it's come from, but there's a one, three pair there. So that's a four. So now this diagonal, perhaps, the 13 diagonal. So if this is a seven, I need these to add up to six, which is impossible because they can't be two threes. So that's got to be an eight and that's got to be a three and that's got to be a two and that's got to be a one. Aha, aha. So that's a one and that's a four and that's a two by maths. And that is almost very important, but Still doesn't seem to have quite cracked the puzzle. That's three, five, so that's four. That's three, that's two. So two is not in these cells anymore. And can we take this further? Oh, eight is not in this 10 domino anymore. So that's three, seven, which means this is two, four, which means there is no two in those squares. So these become three, five. And it's lovely the way this is chaining round, isn't it? That's two, that's eight, that's not eight, so that's not seven. And we can, so that's not seven in this cell anymore. Okay, and can we, oh, sorry, look, I've got the 20 diagonal finished. I've got 12 on it, so that must be an eight in order to make it add up to 20, which means that's eight, that's nine, which means that these are a six, seven pair at the bottom. So I've got six, seven pairs sort of offset in columns one and two. I've got a three here giving me a three and a five. We'll take that. And these two squares have got to be something, a nine and something, a nine and a two. 
Oh, that would be good if that's right. I think it is two and nine missing from column two, and there's a two there. So two and nine go in. One and five have to complete column one. This three is doing damage to the three and the seven. And which, so have we done all the diagonals? Oh no, definitely not. I've not, I'm definitely not done this diagonal. And I've not done this 22 diagonal. And I've sort of, that's not eight anymore, I'm noticing. So if that's not eight, that's not seven. So it was still a little bit hamstrung in terms of what's going on with the high digits on the right hand side of the grid. How do we resolve this with some sort of alacrity? That's the question I'm asking myself, and I haven't got any good answers to it, to that question at the moment. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, can we do any eliminations up there? If I know, here's a small point. These add up to 15, therefore those must add up to 15. So if this can't be a 9, that can't be a 6. Um, so in fact this has to be low, doesn't it? That's got to be a 6 or a 7. Doesn't... Well, it was an interesting point, but it doesn't do anything. Oh look, that's not 9 now by Sudoku, so that has to be a high digit. So now I've got an 8-9 pair in this box, which means these are from 5, 6 and 7. Oh, come on. How is this not resolved? It's because I can't see how to do it. I don't know. Okay, there's a nine in one of those. We'll have to we'll have to keep plugging away and trying to come up with something. Um, is it this? No, this diagonal is still arbitrary because the six and the eight are unresolved. Oh, I haven't looked at this 22 diagonal. What have we got on this then? We've got a sort of smallish big digit, another mediocre digit, a low digit. Oh, I tell you, no, the simple thing is, I don't know if I've ever looked at this 11 diagonal, but that's quite important, isn't it? That definitely can't be a nine. That's got to be an eight. So that's got to be a seven. That's got to be a six. And that's got to be a nine. Yeah, sorry, I just hadn't, I never looked at this clue. So this has to be a one, two, oh, good grief. That's a one, two pair, which means this is a three, four pair. We are, which means that's a two and that's a four. So that's a four and that's a three. So that's a three and that's a five. Oh, the six and the eight are resolved. Everything's getting uh, done and dusted now, I think. We need fours and sevens into these, which is done, which means that's nine and that's six. Wow, okay, one, five and eight there which might not be resolved, except I've... Okay, maybe now I look at this 22 diagonal because I've got 10 on it, I need 12 more. And the only way of those two adding up to 12, I think, is with five and seven. So that's five, that's seven, that's gonna have to be a five. That's seven, that's six, that's six, that's seven, that's five, that's one. These two squares are a one eight pair, which is resolved. Okay, yeah, here we go. One eight gets done. Those two squares have got to be 3, 5, which is apparently not done. These two squares have got to be 1, 6, 9, which is also not done. That's, we can tidy up a couple of those. Right, so we need the middle row to be doing a lot of damage here. Or maybe those squares as well, 5 and 6. No, that's not doing it. So these are 3, 7, 8. So that's not seven, that's not eight. Right, which of these rows do we think is going to be mostly useful? Should we try the middle one? One, seven, nine? Yes, that's a, this is a naked single, so that's a one. That's actually useful as well. That gives me this digit, and, and this digit, and this digit. And that gives me that digit, and that digit, and that digit, and that digit, and this digit, and Okay, so now in this column we can put the 2 in and the 4, which means those have got to be 6 and 8, which is resolved. Which means these, oh, the 9 and the 7 is resolved. The 7 and 3 are resolved. That's going to be 3 and that's going to be 5. 
And that's the puzzle done. Absolutely lovely. What a beautiful puzzle. Um, so the whole trick, apart from not realizing that this diagonal was added up to 11, is all around the fives and thinking through how the fives work in various rows and columns. I think especially row one, row nine, column three and column seven. And it just, this pattern here is absolutely startling with regard to what it did for the rem bands and plonk and you can see all four of those rem bands contain an extreme set of digits and that i think was the point of the puzzle absolutely beautiful i wish we got more puzzles like this actually on the channel because it's n it is approachable i think anyone could have a go at that and anyone could experience the joy of seeing how the fives flow around the grid and understanding you know the implications for these lines um, just wonderful. Thank you very much, Akash, for sending that to me. And thanks for watching the video. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.